I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. Tucker here, and this is podcast Accidentally Casual, where casual conversations come up accidentally. Right here are my co-hosts, Minius from Minius GC. Yo. And Seeker from Bioware Central. Why, hello there. Why did you insist on doing that? Because I just had, that was in my head for a few days, because it's Accidentally Casual, where casual things come up accidentally. I was like, that's a ringer. That does actually sound pretty good. I like it. It's a podcast for Bioware fans and more, or fans of Bioware-like games. Uh, we've had the intro. We're going to try to release this weekly. This is the fourth time we've recorded this podcast. <laughs> yes, because Seeker was plagued with technical difficulties. Oh, uh, please don't let me become someone who's going to refer to herself in the third person. And with, with a fake name, too. Yeah. Is that the, like the fourth or fifth person at that point? I don't know. It's like, it's, it's like that joke in Deadpool. It's like a fourth wall break and a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. So any, anyway, we're going to try to release Tuesdays at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. in the UK. But for now, check our Twitter feeds. I'm at MiniSGC. Tucker manages N7 follower. And SeekerCat is at SeekerCat5500. Uh, we'll eventually get to Tuesday. I think this thing's going to end up coming out on like Thursday. But <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll get our podcast... On our YouTube channels or also on SoundCloud. All right, so let's go get going. Uh, we need a logo, and uh, none of us are talented enough yeah, for that. Do. So we're gonna have. A well, I mean, I'm pretty good with Microsoft Paint. If you if you have so very much seen the new. IP. Let me let me repeat that. None of us are good enough for that. No, yeah. <laughs> and Save Tucker us from has Tucker's proof. Tucker's attempts at Microsoft Paint. Um. So we're gonna have a contest, and you can win fifty dollars U.S. dollars. On for winning a logo, As so opposed check to Canadian dollars, which I believe U.S. dollars are worth more right now, maybe. Yeah, thanks Brexit. <laughs> I I don't think Canada cares about Brexit. They yeah. used to. Do a great thing to do in a Bioware podcast. Get political. Oh yeah. I mean, have you seen a Bioware <laughs> comment section? Oh, that's true. Have you seen any comment section? Basically. No, but that's like true. Bioware that's true, comment true. sections in particular. All right. I, I, I adore Bioware fans, but some people just go off the freaking rails. Yeah, uh, we'll try to re-rail this. Uh, yeah. Please do not send us a political logo. Uh, <laughs> we want a regular logo. You can win 50 bucks. Check uh, our channels for details on that. Uh, hopefully, that'll if it's not up yet, it'll be up in the next couple days. Uh, also, we will accept art for our slideshow. And this slideshow features some of my art because... I feel like shoving it down your throat because <laughs> nobody liked it last time I did it. <laughs> Tucker's seen my I mean, art. To be fair, to be fair, I mean, Minius, it's submit. the only thing you get to shove down someone's throat. Ayo. That's classy. Oh, yes. Classy lady. Now, now I'm quadrupling the thing. <laughs> you, you could make, like, you know, fan-made art or stuff or memes or just anything that you want to share as long as it's not, like, would make our YouTube video get flagged. Share it. We'll put it up picture of your cat cool i love it maybe <laughs> at least let's try and have a stab at attempting to make it somewhat bioware related that, yeah, that's yeah. The bioware. so if it's your cat wearing like an n7 jacket no mm. oh, oh, there we go that is that is kind of like cute i'll probably wearing stuff uh so generally i try to get pictures that follow the weekly topic and this week we're gonna try to talk about anthem because we scheduled this podcast directly after Anthem News came out, and then we didn't succeed in recording it. Four times. <laughs> so, um, basically, new stuff came out about Anthem, and we're going to talk about things that have us... Well, interesting things we've heard about Anthem so far. Hey, I'll commit to this. I'm excited for Anthem. You're very excited for yeah? Anthem. I am very excited yeah. for Anthem. You're by far the most excited out of all of us for Anthem. Woo! Right? Tucker... What's your excitement level I mean, on I, Anthem? I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, but there's other games that are more piquing my interest. Yeah, I, I said on one of the other podcasts we recorded, and it's not coming out, that out of all the games that I absolutely know I'm going to buy, Anthem is the one that I'm least excited for. Eh, because I, I haven't... 
No, what? What do you mean? You wouldn't say that. Of course, you wouldn't say that. You're excited for it. You have your own individual excited. person, and I'm okay, a different you, person. You commit to it, then, Minion. I'm yeah, not great. saying that you are the least excited about. It. That's weird. <laughs> uh, but and, and in fact, the thing that I'm most most interested in Anthem is seeing what the hell Bioware is up to. But let's go. Interesting things could vary drastically. Uh, Tucker, are you aware enough to have anything that you want to talk about? I just put some food in my mouth. All right, Seeker, what do you have to say about <laughs> What do I have to say I'm about I'm sorry, Anthem? the spicy shrimp wins. Oh, my God. Tucker, Tucker, am I going to have to edit out your eating noises? I'm leaning away from the mic as much do as I Do you know la the last show we did, the one that we actually fully recorded, you were, like, jingling your keys into the microphone the whole time? That, that was my dog. He, that was him scratching his collar. Okay, all right. I'm glad that it wasn't I'm you. I was sitting there with like a, like a pair of keys, like a toddler. Like, ooh, I, thought, ooh, I thought that's what yeah. you're doing. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I almost directly I called excited. you up on the telephone to yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my dog going haywire okay. in the back. <laughs> anyway, my thoughts on Anthem, just to try and get us on point. Um, basically, with the, the pack stuff... Um, Bear in mind, like I will freely admit, it wasn't. It certainly wasn't the most exciting panel I've seen at PAX. But I think what they're trying to do is cement that yes, they are still Bioware. Yes, they are still making games for Bioware players, and they're not just trying to chase a new market. So there was a heavy focus with oh, there's still story, there's still characters, there may not be romance anymore at least at launch. But story is still very much their focus, and I think that's a very reassuring position for them to take up. Because, put it this way, if, EA, if let's say, for example, if EA had been the ones to be like, oh, make us a multiplayer game to rival Destiny, if that had been the pitch, then there would be no benefit for EA to just say to have Bioware come out and say, oh no, we're still going to cater to the fans of our previous games. They would just have them chasing the new crowd. But the fact that Bioware came out and really, really put their foot down and said like, no, 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 there's new features that will benefit the story and you'll be able to shape your story. I mean, the whole feature was called um, My Story, Our World. Your, was it? Was it our, our World, our world yeah. My Story? Your, yeah, it, it, was, it was I, Our World, Your heart. Story, and it should have stayed that way. <laughs> what, what 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 what's with the my? I don't know. It, it's it's you have to read. Their... I've had too much caffeine and I no, can't read. No, I'm not. Right I'm now. not. No, no, no. You're correct. That <laughs> they changed it from our world, my story. But then you actually have to read their tagline for it to apply to you. It's not a good. It's not know. a good tagline. <laughs> anyway, you're right. They are trying to make it somewhat bioware-ish, but right now it feels. Like a half Bioware, half Destiny game, and I have no idea if that's going to work. None at all. Be be interesting to look at, but I'm not sure what the excitement level is for this game overall. You know, I, I mean, I, say I, I I know you're interested. No, uh, no, I know I'm interested. I'm saying, of I I've heard murmurings. I've heard people responding to Anthem. They see it like in the community. People seem to be tentatively excited. I think okay. uh, with the E3 presentation, that soothed a lot of people's so, worries. M maybe it's just where we're looking, but I've seen mostly people going, I don't know, uh, and kind of more on the lines of, I don't think I'm going to buy this game yet. I want to see what they have. They're not excited, but they're not ruling it out yet. Mm, I get that. Speaking of one of the points that I came up with on the on Pies, you mentioned uh, this is a Bioware game, not an EA game that said, hey, you guys do this. Uh, yeah. That is something that's actually Jonathan Warner of Bioware came out and said that this is more of an evolution of Bioware games. EA did not push for Anthem. This is all Bioware, which I don't necessarily believe. But like you said, there isn't really a good reason for him to come out and say that if it's not true. Yeah. And I... I, I, I'm sure he couldn't come out and say, this is absolutely an EA game. They pushed us to do this. We didn't want to. Uh, that would completely derail the project. <laughs> They're like, well, you're and, fired. <laughs> and get him fired, yeah. It would be like, I'm just going to pull a, Ro a Roxanne Barr right now. Roseanne Barr right now. Jesus Christ. 
At some point, I and I, I think we've said this in, I've said this in previous episodes. So this is Anthem. It, it's, it's very clearly along the lines of destiny and in a way the division and neither of those games really lived up to the potential of it so far. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a really good game in that, in that system, a really good game. And in which one in the entire concept of a hybrid MMO RPG type setting. Uh, you mean world of Warcraft hybrid. I would say that world of Warcraft is a full on MMO. With a yeah. bunch of dudes running around, this is more of a say, yeah. console hybrid. You're not you're not running into an area with like forty dudes beating on this poor little like tiny little rabbit, which is fun by the way. But that's not what the game is. I would like to see that though. It ends. Can you imagine like what would a bunny rabbit even resemble in the world of Anthem? Well, they could make a Probably gigantic a one, yeah, like like one of those like bear sized ones, but. Like, I, be... I can't think of a single thing we've seen in Anthem that remotely... No, th th there's been nothing. Funny. There was like, a... The only uh, animal we've seen has been, like, the, the wall bear. I'm uh, going to assume but... neither of you guys have played Dragon's Crown. I thought you were about to say Dragon Age. Dragon's <laughs> Crown, that's right. It's not Dragon Age. It's a uh, side-scroller beat-em-up with uh, ridiculous sexual dra Japanese drawings. Oh, um, nope. Uh, anyway, one of the bosses that you're you're like heading up to the boss and people keep on they're like this is terrifying beast coming up. It's a rabbit. It's a tiny little rabbit that can one shot you. <laughs> well, someone's a fan of Monty Python. Yeah, it was great. Anyway, fun, uh, fun fact: I went and saw Spamalot back in the day, and in the foyer, uh, Spamalot the musical, they sold um, slippers that were the killer bunny rabbit. They, you, you could sort of open the mouth flaps and they had like little um, teeth and it was adorable. I wish I'd got a, a pair. There was also a, I also just remember there was a book a long time ago called like Bunnicula. It was like a Dracula bunny. That's cute. One of the most- I'm not the only one that's remembering that. There's got to be other people that read like Bunnicula or whatever, however you pronounce it. I guarantee you that um, English listeners will remember um, Duckula, which is a kid's cartoon that was a duck that was a vegetarian vampire. And it was amazing. How does that work? So now I've done the D-Rift. <laughs> no, no I, he... I definitely started this. Okay, yeah, so let's come I mean, into it. Um, a fruit bat? So he was bitten by a fruit bat? No, he wasn't. Uh, he oh. the, Literally, the whole intro of the show is that he comes from a long line It of... was a show? There was a, sh a whole cartoon show. I'm going to send you a YouTube link, and as uh, many as can choose to put it in the, the thing or not, but I will send you a link. But, <laughs> at this, at this it's point... It's so good. It's there... so good. But um, it's, like, so creepy, and it's and it starts off with, like, oh, yes, once uh, there was a line of vicious vampire ducks, but then one day um, they have to resurrect the Count Ducklers every so often because uh, they die uh, or like, go, go to sleep in a coffin. And, but instead of putting blood in the mixture, they put ketchup instead. So he's a vampire duck. Uh, he's a vegetarian vampire duck this time around. And he doesn't like kids, violence kids, at all. Kids shows can be so weird. Oh, English kids shows. You have no idea. Like I, nobody, nobody cared. I like I Canadian mean, Courage kids the shows. Cowardly Dog? Canadian kids shows. Courage are just the Cowardly weird. Dog? I don't think that's very weird. No, Courage was amazing. Courage, the Cowardly Dog. I love that Courage. show. Courage was that entire show was on acid and everything, and that show was just amazing. Yeah, creepy as hell. I'm trying to think of the most amazing uh. segue ever to bring us back to yeah. Anthem. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Uh, hey, that spider monster. Pretty creepy, right? Yeah, there we go. Actually, that that is the one thing that I've seen about Anthem that I'm more excited for is killing enormous monsters. Mm, I like I like yeah, that a lot we, better than killing like people. Or because what's the biggest thing we've ever had to fight in a Bioware game that was that wasn't like a Reaper or a construct, but was a, a, a flesh, and, flesh and blood? Uh, I, the, the only thing that's coming to mind dragons? for me is like the brute, like the dragons. Yeah, but it's I suppose. But there was the me, robot the dragon feel... in Andromeda. <laughs> Yeah, that thing. But that, that totally falls under a construct. But um, with the dragons as well, it just they, they don't get me wrong, they're terrific boss fights, but 
I, I don't know. I think the thing I've liked the most, and I, I maybe this falls under a construct, was uh, my favourite flesh and blood ish thing we've had to fight was the um, what was the Krogan Turian hybrids called? Oh, the brutes. In, uh, the, yeah, the brutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to call them brutes, and I, uh, for some reason I thought that was wrong. But yeah, the brutes were correct. pretty cool. Yeah, I know things. I know things. I know things. I expert. I is smart. SMRT. So, the scars <laughs> in Anthem yeah. are made of bugs. They are insect so like bugs. mimics. That's what Mark Dara said. Hold, and hold they, on. Are they yeah. actually bugs or are they made up of a bunch of little tiny bugs? Well, Mark it's, Dara it's said. like that creature is a bunch of bugs that are like makes the arm and makes the legs. And so it's like it's like, like a bunch of bugs a... stuck together? Oh, that that's that's hilarious. Yeah, I, I was telling yeah. this to the guys beforehand. But it, but it's it, it reminds me a lot of the Legolo from Halo, which are the worms that form the hunters. Wait, Tucker, do, it's, it's a, Tucker, do you like Halo? I do, dude. Halo's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> but um, the worms will come together and they'll go inside like the armor, and that's what makes the hunter. Oh, that is horrifying. And so it's it's very. It reminds me a lot of uh, the scars, how they're similar. Yeah, because I was telling you guys that I um, went and hit pause on those um, the slides for the mission, and they have like little lore bits, and um, there's uh, an eyewitness account from Arcanist Records uh, talking about the scars, where they have a quote: um, "It wasn't just four or five insects; it was thousands, an entire colony working together to make arms and legs to be people." It's like, oh, that shit is creepy. I like the sound of it. Why are we killing those things? They sound adorable. <laughs> they want to. Be I mean, there are people that have pet. I mean, there are people that have like pet cockroaches that just like to make terrible decisions in life. But well, that's different. Like, like these are like these are like. Imagine these bugs. They're trying so hard to be people, and then you run in and like destroy them with rockets to loot them. Minis, question. That's so question. messed up. Ha That's what you get for trying to evolve. <laughs> Minis, I have a question. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Single White Female? Now, would you want to recreate this movie with a giant insect? Uh, I thing? haven't, and the answer is no. Yeah. Because the answer is always no, because giant freaking insect thing. But, but they're just like, you're going out of your way to kill things, right? Yes. That was one of my favorite things about uh, like the Monster Hunter games. Mm -hmm. You're killing big animals, but you're basically running around killing animals to eat them. <laughs> I think you're technically so, like getting so the, the little, the cute little kitty cats to cook a really awesome looking meal for it's you. It's so messed up. Yeah, that's basically. But I just picture like these bugs. Like, all right, we worked, we worked fifty generations to to imitate them humans, and we're like, some little bug creature comes over and waves to you, and you just blow it away <laughs> with a <the> shotgun. <laughs> Clearly, you haven't seen my reaction to when there's a spider in my house, which is to get the biggest no, thing I can find and throw but, it. But at that, them. that's an individual spider <laughs> that might bite you. These are like adorable bugs that are trying to be human. They look pretty creepy to me. <laughs> it reminds me of like the spider, like the friend spider meme thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, just one of those photos of like a house that's on fire. So I saw a spider. I think I, I think it's gone now. <laughs> Misunderstood oh, yeah. spider is what it's called. Since we're doing this show a little differently because we have to, because the fourth time over we're doing the same thing. Stop sending pictures, <laughs> Tucker. God damn it. Um, <laughs> I need to turn off my notifications. It interrupts me every single time. Um, so another big anthem news. Yes. Uh, all DLC is well, going to be free. Yeah. See, no, well, all, no. All single okay, player well, they DLC. Exactly no, try again. Try again. Is that they're gonna not going to lock any story content behind a paywall. So I can imagine That's... there's some, but, uh, like, this is me speculating. There will probably be maybe some DLC of, like, Stronghold stuff, but it doesn't seem like they're going to say, oh, you can't, they're not going to hold people back and say, oh, here's a story quest you can't access because of, you know, you don't have this particular bit of DLC. So I imagine there'll be loot and stuff that you can't get if you don't have DLC, but as I said, they have explicitly said they're not going to lock off any story content behind a paywall, which is definitely admirable. The, the You're going after an article and basically the... What they've said is story DLC would be free, but that ah, leaves right. lots of other kinds of DLC that may not be free. So I. But so, 
something that I do like it because Anthem Anthem is even though you can't play it single player, it's more for mm. people playing with friends. Um, and some I what I like that this is sounding like it's doing is what uh, other games have done with multiplayer DLC, and some of them will have free multiplayer DLC. And the reason being is that they don't want to limit the amount that fans can play with their friends and things like that. Like, if you want to play multiplayer, but your friend doesn't have the DLC, so you can't really play together, it sounds like that's what they're doing here. They want to make sure that you're not limited playing with your friends, that you don't both have to buy it, that you're both able to just continue playing it if you want for free. All right, Seeker, you officially passed me up as the loser of this week's <laughs> episode by trying to post videos for Tucker to watch <laughs> while we're recording in the podcast. You know he's going to watch that and ignore us for the next 30 minutes. The world, God, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and bold all right. to assume uh, I don't what are, normally send Tucker videos and stuff whilst we're doing this. I, I, I'm, I'm aware of that, but now it's out of hand. Tucker, well, it's uh, Tucker's going to, I can't tell what Tucker what to do ever. <laughs> it's, I don't even know why I thought about trying. <laughs> Tucker is an entity of into in and of himself. The uh, yeah, but I'm also lovable. The other thing, and and uh, <laughs> oh, let's see. I'll, I'll go over all my points. the The thing that had me weirdly not, and this because I'm really nerdy, and I don't know why Shocker. I I like surprises me. Shock. It surprises Horror. me how much of a nerd I am. Every like every other month, I do something that's even nerdier than I Aww. thought I could do. Like, for instance, I just spent 16 hours recording text in the Mass Effect games of lore. And I'm serious, like, just text. That's ridiculous. And guess what? Anthem has a yes, codex. Has I can do that again. This is my life now. <laughs> like, woo, it has a codex. I can read stuff. That was one of the larger mistakes that Destiny has made continuously in my opinion well, it's just, uh, uh, is you have to go out you have to really go out of your way to find not destiny only do you lore. have to go out of your way like, to go find online it, you've got to get lore off of the loot and it's all like pieced together of like oh this is a snippet of a conversation that someone said and it's just like bear in mind i uh like my name is bife and other channels like him do great jobs trying to piece this stuff together but as someone who's like just but trying that's... to play the game and have a general understanding of how the world works it's very frustrating experience that's like so they have these long loading mm -hmm. screens right to get into like pvp matches or going that is a perfect time to throw up that some lore one thing that drove me nuts perfect about time. dragon age which was uh, inquisition in particular um you had loading screens right but, and, and they would be these little cards of lore-based things that you could flip between, right? But the, here's the thing. They only stayed up on the screen for about 20 seconds, and then it would hit a hard black where you were just sat there waiting for the thing to load. It's just like, get the, get the lore screen back so up. It, it, it didn't, didn't quite work Not then? Not quite. I'm trying. I, I, I don't think... remember that. Tucker, how many loading screens did oh. you get when you were playing Dragon Age Inquisition? <laughs> With I mean, loading the game and then loading into yep, the hinterlands? Technically. <laughs> technically. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, Skyrim I th in Fallout, I think that does that as well. I the actually Scrolls play with a mod that it expands Fallout on the I think... lore screens that has, like, lore from across all the whole Elder Scrolls franchise. So it, it does have that on there, where sometimes it'll have, like, it'll, it sometimes it'll say, like, how to play the game or, like, a little bit of control thing, but sometimes it'll have lore up there. Did and you that's really know? Cool when There's do that. a jump button in this game. <gasps> really? Dude, there was uh, one of my favorite games of all time Dude, now. This is uh, Hell Divers, which I really hope they're making mm -hmm. a sequel to. And it's it's a ridiculous multiplayer game where you can shoot your friends. So if you're playing with Tucker, you couldn't beat anything because um, he'd just shoot uh -huh. you. But they show tips in between, like when you're loading up. And one of the tips was, did you know that we show tips in loading screens? <laughs> there's a there was one in doom the the new one the 2016 doom one of the loading screens was if the enemy has a head <laughs> that's its weak spot very good that's great so tell us in the comments below what was yeah. your favorite loading screen joke so this is what happens when we record like seriously talk about anthem for three straight podcasts we exhaust and it doesn't our material make it online, and then we just and and, and yeah. now we we don't want to go back to it we're trying to actively avoid talking about Anthem. <laughs> what javelin do y'all want to? Are y'all going to use first? Leaning towards storm or interceptor, probably depending on 
uh, who I'm playing with, whoever they're going to be. I'll, I'll, I'll probably flip a coin between Storm or Interceptor. You're, you're wrong. Oh, you're going to play the Ranger first because you have to. Uh, okay, when you get a choice, Midius, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. What's going to be your main one, then? Don't be such a killjoy, <laughs> damn what, it. What's going to be your main one? But what it seems... It it seems like uh, or not seems uh, Mark Dara. I say Dara, but that, I think that's just it. I think it's just tomato tomato Dara? thing. Dara? Honestly, uh, um, there's got to be a real way to say his name. He, well, I, vote I'm in just... the comments. How do you? It, it might do you it might be Mark it might be Dara, Dara, because he's in Canada right now and they have a specific so his, like so pasta. Is... How do you say pasta in Canadian? It's pasta. <laughs> pasta. But um, he he kind of sneakily said that the uh storm is the healing class yeah, i like it i like playing because someone said someone uh asked to him will there be any kind of healing class or support class like that and his response was we're not ready to talk about the storm well, that's yet. very intentional i actually uh, picked I, up I, I saw that yeah, yeah there was someone asking if they didn't have to kill anybody and yeah you could he said you could be a storm i assume that was more of a like a like a glass cannon suit but it doesn't look like it and it, it i mean it also kind of it was easy to predict that the storm was going to be mm -hmm. the support one specifically like the classes is the tank the ranger is the uh kind of standard all yeah the all around interceptor from the way its body looks that, and everything like that you can tell that's yeah. going to be either the long range or up close it'll be oh, like one of those long range or and, close as if there's anything in between well, there's intermediate yeah. <laughs> yeah, this middle. Um, the all-rounder. So with that, and then it's like, well, you don't have one that... Because you need, like, the medic on the team. It's like Team Fortress 2 or uh, Overwatch or any of that stuff. Like, there's still medic classes to play as. So it's like, it seems like that would be the Storm one. As well as the stereotype of, like, that's the magic kind of one. So that's the one that can heal and support. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I'm i going to go, like, it's, I think at some point we should have a podcast. We're going to have a lot of different podcasts but in one of the future ones, we'll have combination excitements and concerns about Anthem. Yeah. Um, Depending on what they've said that week. One of the things, like, I, fortunately, it doesn't appear like they're going into space. But but I hate space magic. I really do. I love space well, magic. It, I mean, it looks like it all takes place kind of like on a planet. Yeah. And they said that it it's grounded in some form of reality or some form of, like... Believable I think reality. I heard it. I'll tell you what. I'm was... really hoping. Sorry, yeah. I'm really hoping that those humans that that you're there come from Earth, and there's a story like how they got there. I hope they come. That'll from get me interested. I hope they come from the Dragon Age universe. That would be amazing. They're like, where's Alistair? What happened? <laughs> are Are you ready? Are you ready for this? This is no. This is the see. This is going to be the biggest secret, biggest release thing. Way to spoil so it. You load up Anthem. You load up Anthem. It goes through, has an awesome cutscene, everything like that. It's a, it says Anthem, and then underneath it says like uh, J or Baldur's Gate three. Just like a big squeakly, I, like I, I have a feeling that would piss off Baldur's Gate fans like no other. <laughs> that I just want, and then I just want that to happen. Like a big a, a Cusco <laughs> jumps through the screen with a big squiggly um, sharpie and squiggles out the Anthem logo and and writes on Baldur's Gate on the screen. Baldur's Gate three. What if what if the game what? is completely different and it ends up really being a Baldur's Gate game and there are no suit mechs? What a plot twist that would like be. Like they've literally showed no like, game. Would that yet? be like the ultimate revenge for the indoctrination theory not being a thing? Is like, right, we're gonna troll you bastards so hard, you have no idea. Uh anyway, uh you can email in questions to us at accidentallycasual at gmail dot com. Yeah. Uh Scott Jones had a question. And he wrote it in all caps. Yeah. Is Tucker oh. working for EA? And if so, why did they hire him? Even better, why is Trucker working at EA? So are we sure he's talking? Yeah. Wait, what? He wrote it Trucker. Did I... Yeah. He did write it Trucker, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so are we sure he's referring to me? No, but I'm, he, he, you, you used to work at EA, right? Yeah, I did, uh, I did contract work on Madden 19. And I'm qualified for that because... I focus my entire educate my entire college education on gaming as well as work on small games and I, I do a lot of game design stuff. It's that was what I that do. was one of the two most interesting things when we met up at uh, at EA headquarters. A you had a very serious streak that I wasn't expecting, 
And I can be professional. Yeah, you can, I really which can. I did not think was possible. No. So that was good. The second thing is that Biofan dropped Tucker and I like – they're nerdy kids at high school went and hang out with the cool YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he hopped shit. Just because he can actually pass himself off as a cool YouTuber, where you guys are just dorks sat in the corner. T Tucker, Tucker, Bife, and I are sitting at a table talking, and like we literally wave to Biofan as he's walking by. Did not even look at us. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> he just he just kept on going, and we're looking at each other like, "What the hell is that?" Speaking of cool like, YouTubers, I'm sorry, funny gamer story. gamer eighty three is here. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Speaking of cool YouTubers and a funny story, um, Ability Drain recently uh, posted a photo saying, like, "Oh, I'm dry. like she was making a joke about a sign," and I was like, "Oh, that's not too far away from where I live." And I sent her a message saying, "Oh, do you want to swing by and have a cup of tea or something?" And she said, oh, no, I'm going to a wedding. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Where And I just talked for a little bit. And then she said, hey, you want to crash? And I was like, you know what? I've got nothing else to do today. So I crashed Ability Drain's wedding. Uh, well, not her wedding, uh, her brother's wedding, rather. Wait, yeah, oh, wait, I crashed what? Ability Drain's brother's wedding by invitation. And it was fun. All right. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, there was a time Bife was in Orlando, and I, I reached out to see if he wanted to hang out, but that was his last Aww. day he was here when I saw that he was at Disney. I That's was like, ah, oh, damn. But... <laughs> but, oh my god, Tucker's messaging here. I can't let him know I'm here for another week. Fuck, I gotta leave. Shit, he knows yep. I'm here. I gotta leave the States. <laughs> Speaking of questions that you can send to accidentallycasual at gmail.com, uh, Brian Henry, who was actually a big fan of Bioware all the way down, played Baldur's Gate, uh, bought all their games, who didn't really enjoy Inquisition or Andromeda, wants to know that he's he, he doesn't really seem interested in this game. And I suppose the question that we're going to answer here is, if this game flops, does Bioware survive? I would say yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because, for one thing, we know... like. Going into before they announced Anthem, we knew pretty much that they had at least three projects in the works because Anthem was project uh, codename Project Dylan. There's a codename Project Joplin in the works, and that is a different project than the Dragon Age Four that totally no one is working on and no one knows anything about. Mr. Mark Dara, who is listing himself as executive producer. Triple producer. wink. Yeah, triple wink. Not to mention that, oh, did you catch that in the Anthem panel? Is that um, when they were talking about Fort Tarsus being a hub world, and bear in mind Mark Dara is the executive producer for Anthem and Dragon Age specifically. He said, oh, maybe we'll have something like this in the future of Dragon Age and and other Bioware franchises. Like, it's like I caught that. It's like, so are we gonna? I hope we actually have a decent city to wander around in, or at least a, you know type of atmosphere in Dragon Age Four, because that was the thing that really. I felt a little bit let down by in Inquisition is that all of the, like bear in mind that that was the first time you got to go to Valreo, which is the capital city of Orlais, which is this um, rival kingdom, and it's like oh I wanted to see this place because we only heard about it in lore, and you go into it and there's like five people, and one like <laughs> place you can go to, and it's like this is the capital city. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> and like, you bear in mind that like, I've been reading about this shit for years. So when I was like, there's like one place, there's one fountain I can go to. Are you serious? And uh, that was really disappointing. So the idea of like, oh, in the, the next one, we're going to have, you know, a city with actual like moving people. And yeah, I would love to see that. That is one of the things I'm looking forward to as uh video game technology progresses is that these worlds especially these hub cities that you go to mm -hmm. are going to be absolutely packed oh yeah and interesting oh, and yeah. I'm, well i think, I think there's cool. only one in the anthem i think there's only one hub area a uh, uh, fort tarsus yeah you have i uh, from yeah. what i can see like i've had a look at like the footage there seems to be a handful of different locations but they all seem to be in Fort Tarsus that have the same sort of characters like at one point you see um, Halleck the guy who uh, Nick Tarabay plays like sat uh, that sort of stood next to a bar there's another thing that's clearly like a cave of some sort where some sort of deal is going on and Halleck's there as well so it's like oh there's, there's clearly like they shift up the 
location so it's visually interesting but it does seem that and how oh god yeah how gorgeous did the um the view from your balcony of your apartment at Fort Tarsus look do you remember when they showed that no but thank oh, you well they stopped the, the project there to say oh here's the view from your um from your apartment I would love it if it was absolute garbage <laughs> Like just total piles of garbage, and you're just like, aren't you glad you're a freelancer? <laughs> That's the one thing. Like, like they're talking. Like, okay, so freelancer, they're trying to make that into a positive. Like, you're like good for human, dude. If you're a freelancer, normally you're a douchebag. You're like a mercenary. You're like, pay um, I, me. I, I, I would say honestly, between like the Herald, Commander, they're sort of running out of titles to give you. <laughs> I, I guess so. The warden, the champion, you know, there's just, there's only yeah. so many they can freaking come up with. I bet they could the come up with something. The pathfinder, you know, it's like they, they need to come up with something super dramatic sounding, and it's like, yeah, the freelance is fine. I'll I'll take it. Okay, I just like like why aren't we getting respect? We're freelancers. I saw it in there. I'm like, you're not getting any respect because you call yourself a freelancer. Oh, did you get did you get the guy who was like <laughs> he wants to make the freelancers great again? I was like, really? Okay, fair enough. So, what if the way that Anthem ends? Because we know like, that. Well, the end story of Anthem. This is just like. Do, yeah. do you think Anthem will end? Ever. So, 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 um, <laughs> so, um, another. This is kind of another just crazy thing, just because the Baldur's Gate <laughs> thing, similar to that. Um, oh my god. You're like you're going through. You're you're exploring this big wreckage and things like that. It's like at the end, it's like this is where you, a lot of them are getting to source their powers, where the scars from getting their weapons, like all that stuff. And you know, going through, you finding out. And the very like last thing on the side of like this big wreckage is just the Corian ship. <laughs> Don't like, the do Corian that. Arc. The Kila. The Kila's a lie. They're like, what happened? Why are we on this weird it planet will... with bug people? Like, and then. And then the screen like goes to black and it says like Mass yeah. Effect Four or something like that, like and then a date. And it'll be the next week. So you're like, Holy shit! <laughs> I'm just. By that like, would be Casey, a twist. <laughs> Casey Hudson has now teased Mass Effect multiple times in the last week. Well, he. Oh yeah. That's kind of irritating me. Like, it doesn't the, irritate me. It's just like it irritates is... me. There's no way that game can come out in the next seven years. It's his baby, for God's sake. Okay. It, I, you know, he always has, has been I'll honest and say, like, look, that game is, it, that franchise is my baby. So there's no way he was going to leave it sat okay. dormant. As well as, like, it, it is possible that they could have been working on it for some time. They just don't want to say right. anything about the, it because they don't want attention taken away from Anthem. The, the most, yeah. I mean, since uh, EA or uh, Bioware Montreal has been reconstituted in EA, the, the most games they can work on at the same time, Bioware, that is, is two, right? So you got Anthem, and then you got the next Dragon Age game, and then there's no way they're not doing another Anthem after that unless it bombs. So then and you can get a I'm, Mass Effect Considering all this focus on live services, um, as the game industry is like to call it, I would say the Anthem team will be for at least a solid year or two be focusing exclusively on Anthem 1. Correct. Um, that would be... And then, then, then addition... This is what I'm saying. There's a lot of things to work mm. on before you can get to a mass effect. Exactly. As well, well, I mean... And this is... Well, this is also just... Everyone knows that pe people will work on multiple games at a time. Um, well, I mean, when I was working on Madden 19, before Madden 19 was released, there were people already starting to work on Madden 20. Which is not at the same game at all. Everything in it is different. It's not oh, even no, football. Oh no, we need to add, like slightly tweak the graphics. S sorry, I'm giving player. you shit, dude. Those games are identical. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really from what, from what I played, but yeah, but no. Yeah. What, what, from when you played, did they change the rules of the game? I mean, it's still football, but it's just the uh, American football, the game modes and things like that. You know, I mean, you that know. name football actually comes from the British, so we it's your fault. It is not our fault, you guys. It totally to is your fault. It our language. No, no. You had versions of football, a whole bunch of different ones, and so we came up with our own versions of football, and so the Australians and the Canadians. I mean, Australians have call it yeah. gridiron. 
And that's badass. <laughs> to be fair, it would not surprise me at all if Australians just took to the, the pitch and were just like, we're going to beat the shit out of you with actual bits of metal now. That would be that would be a fun sport. Yeah. There is a sport in uh, in one of the towns in Italy that basically you have fifty people on the side. Oh, and they said it this on kind fire. of yeah. net. No, this is something different. They have this net like it. It looks like it could be a soccer match, and you can. And then they're like, okay, there are no rules. That's yeah. it. You can't have weapons, but it's basically a combination of rule. MMA and rugby. There's one rule. Yeah, it's. I want to play. I, I'd get killed. <laughs> anyway, speaking of. The rule is no one talks about Fight Club, apparently, is what that thing sounds like. All right, so we're going to go with guidelines. I've made up this thing. I'm going to start calling this Bio Like Games, which yeah. uh, are games like BioWare. We talked about this in the first show, and this is relating to A, we're going to go over Anthem, and B, some other games that we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so there are 11 points. What makes up a BioWare game? You ready? Yeah. Let's we're applying this to Anthem. Story branches. Does Anthem appear to have story branches? Yes. It yeah. it does in in a yes. very small way. Hey, we don't know how Well, we don't we don't yes. know how much it works. It could or I I think they're going to try. Right? I mean, to be like Mass Effect and Andromeda kind of had the issue where it felt like your choices didn't really no. matter much. And well, a lot was... of those games, I think we should get into that in a future episode. Uh, yeah. But it's it's a difficult thing to pull off. Oh, yeah. As well as it was supposed to be the first one, like Mass Effect 1, although a lot of the choices, a, de a decent amount of choices, you would see the repercussions for it in Mass Effect 1. You saw them a lot more in 2 and 3. Yes, yeah. in a way. You got, like characters you got being alive is something. Story. But you so, still got a so complete story like, in one, whereas Ansem just felt like, oh, well, you'll find out in the next one. Well, it's like, great. You, yeah, you know what I really want? I like... really want a bug person squad mate. <laughs> a scar squad mate? Yeah. I'm calling them bug people until someone tells me to stop. Stop. Um, <laughs> point number two, conversation branches. Yes. Is that what you just point said? Point number two, conversation branches? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. What was, the first, no, what was the first one? Story branches. Oh, story. Okay. <laughs> so there, there are, it's going to be binary i believe you're only gonna have two options so the answer is yes but limited but it's still yes yes okay which to be fair it is like you know they have multiplayer features so they're kind of they're doing what they can they're still giving you a bioware experience but with multiplayer so it's like, it yeah, is that's, that's fine. literally impossible to have super impacting decisions and stuff in a multiplayer game in a massive multiplayer be game to see what anthem does with it yeah that's fine all right, point number three, it's an RPG. Yeah. Yes, I Anthem mean, is yeah. an RPG. I think we're all agreed on that point. Does anyone want to disagree with that? Okay. Point number four. My cat just climbed underneath the door. The door is shut, and she just wiggled her body you, you, you through the a crack. Cat. It's a cat. <laughs> Tucker, by the way, sent us a picture of a cat in a toilet during this episode. With soon written on it. I also I also put it on Twitter. <laughs> uh, point number four: It's single player. Uh, half right. I mean, no, yeah. no, it's no. It, yeah. I'm going to go with <laughs> no. It's not because you can't play everything, and it's not going to be a single player driven campaign. Well, I, I well what it is. Servers will have only four people, so even if you're playing alone, the chance of coming across the other three people is slim. Well, not slim, but it's, it's a small chance of it happening. So you can really do this in it's, single-player They said mode, you can well play single-player, but there's no way it's designed for single-player. So, I mean, it could okay. be. Uh, you just have it. You just have its enemy scale damage, when, depending. I mean, it's going to be more complicated than that, but you have enemy scale damage. Okay, well, it's and, more of along the lines of, of plot and stuff. We will see. Yes. How about that? We, when the game we comes out, we will, we will come up with final ratings. In fact, it'll... It'll be fun to kind of rate games and see how bio-like they are based on this meter, which is the eventual goal. All right, I point number want, five. Like, I was gonna say, just right, from Anthem, all I want point. is just this, yeah, side point. I just want, like, I want it to 
suck me into this world and I really feel a world that feels tactile and tangible and that this is a place that you know interesting characters and then towards the end I want it to hit me with a massive plot twist so it's like oh my god and that's what I think Bioware has been well certainly Andromeda lacked because there was nothing in Andromeda that could really really qualify as a twist it's like oh your dead mum is alive were were uh, were corrupted. The ones that look suspiciously like the Ket are actually the Angara. It's like, oh, gee. Well, the blue the blue lion uh, people like, were were technically yeah, they were a twist, but you just didn't care about them. Like put it this way, like a lot of people didn't like. Uh, well, uh, they say a lot of people like loads of people did love Dragon Age Inquisition, but uh, there were still some people that felt a little bit. Dis- um, Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Two. Um, really structured themselves around subverting who you thought the villain was, um, bits of lore that you, you you took as gospel and then were subverted into being like, oh, that was someone lying. Now, Inquisition is a fairly straightforward story for most of it. It's only right at the end where it's like, and here's some curveballs. And it's like, what? Like, yeah, for, for um, as someone who's been a diehard Dragon Age fan... Uh, like spoilers for Dragon Age Inquisition, for spoilers, spoilers. But um, you have this guy in your party who's like, oh, I know things, and he hangs around, and like you can befriend him, and you can if you're a female elf, you can fall in love with him, and he breaks your heart, and then it's revealed at the end of the story, oh, holy shit, he was a god who betrayed the world and basically screwed everything. It's like, holy shit, that is really serious implications. And literally the whole of the last bit of DLC we got was going to confront him to get him to explain himself. And that was fascinating. Like Everyone loves Trespasser. It is pretty much the Citadel of of the Dragon Age franchise. So, you know how uh, people compare... Or how they say, like, Witcher and well, CD Projekt Red in general, how they are similar to Bioware mm. with their stuff? Yeah. Some news that people that are fans of Bioware games would also T- be Tucker, we're going to get into that later. This is something that Let you can't finish. derail started. it. I Let- no! Don't no! Think you're about finish. to say the same news that I did. Fine. Because <laughs> Henry Cavill is going to play Geralt in the Netflix Witcher show. Which is exactly like what you were talking about. They have ex- <laughs> well, because it's their fan. Because a lot of Bioware fans would also be a fan of Witcher Three and things like that. And it's like, oh, in relation news to Witcher, because I wanted a segment within my segment. Uh, Henry Cavill will play Geralt. Well, they have exactly Those the same. N- emotional Netflix range. shows are interesting. Some of them are really, really good, and they're putting out some real garbage now. So I hope that's. I hope that's good. Well, it all depends on who's the writer. I I guess it's, it's not like Netflix themselves is just like them doing that. Well, like, no, you can you can filter shows and decide not to put bad ones on, but they just throw yeah. everything up there. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, back to we went story branches, conversation branches, RPG, single player, right? Yeah, and then I mean, there def- is accidentally casual. Is our podcast a buy or a game? Because there are conversation branches. <laughs> we. We'll get into that later. We're still on Anthem. And it's an RPG. We are role play- We are playing ourselves. Like I, I guess. We are playing this role. Oh, and my God. You broke there the are world, story- What have you done? <laughs> and it is, a, it is a single player. What have you done? Friends are optional. Can I mute you? Hold on. Let me see if I can mute you. <laughs> I'm breaking it. <laughs> I found it. We're doomed. All right. Lo- or we're let's really- let's finish this up and go over it quickly. We're yeah. in the middle of looking at Anthem now that we have more information as a Bioware-like game. Is it a major release game? Yes. The answer is yes. Damn it, that's not our life. Is it? Is there a focus on characters? Yes. It looks like they're trying to do that. Yeah. Yes. Are they going for a super in-depth sci-fi or fantasy universe? Hell yeah. Damn it, that's not our life either. Yes. Uh, is it story-based? Yes. Yeah. Probably. Can you create your own character? Yes. Well, yes, you can. Well, no. You can well, be male or female or whatever, and maybe you don't have the control you want, but... I mean, from what it sounds like, they don't have character customizer the Tr- way they trust have previously. Tucker, you're it, not it, playing as Super Mario. You are creating your own character. <laughs> well, no, no. It's um, it's from the way it says face options. So not so what Tucker, people are thinking. Tucker, you are like creating is, uh, your own character. You're debating a point that is in stone. Yeah. Stop it. 
You lose. You lose this point. Oh. You lose. Good day, sir. Go, go, go talk about Geralt and Superman <laughs> in a corner. Is it squad based? Yes. The squad but in a different way. Actual it's other squad people with friends. Now, but it's squad based. I mean, yeah, you've had games in the past that are squad based where the characters are kind of nothing there. So, yes, squad based. Is there romance? Not at launch. Only in your head. That that also sounds like real life. For you. Not not at launch and in our head. This is just like real life where you can go up to attractive people and they will shoot you down. <laughs> Who shot you down in a Bioware game? Oh, sorry. Gianna <laughs> Parasini, your one true love. No, she she was she was into me. She was just afraid to say it. <laughs> right. Okay. Well she bought me a she bought me a beer. So you, she you'd go get you to do something she needed. She's a super that's okay. spy. She's out of your league. Yeah, that's that's hot. Okay. Uh, so anyway, if you want us to write in and talk about other games that we want to cover, uh, we'd love to hear you say. I asked what other games people wanted to cover, and almost exclusively, everyone said Cyberpunk 2077. Or Death Stranding, so, which I was like, really? But yeah, okay. No, no. They, I mean, trust me, it was like a it was like a nine to one ratio. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, saying Cyberpunk. that it wasn't the majority. I'm just saying I saw one person say, oh, Death Stranding. Yeah, I Death Stranding. Like, and, and you're afraid of Hideo Kojima because he's creative, right? Let me just sum up what you said in a totally biased yeah. way. I am afraid of Hideo Kojima because he's creative. No, I just, I, like, I've seen the footage from Death Stranding. It, it, I, I, I have no idea mind, what's going on in that game. The that led to mind to me was pretentious bullshit. I mean, oh my god, interesting. Boo! Boo, boo me! Let like. him let him do his crazy stuff. Oh, they are. They're like Sony. He, he, do, he doesn't make do bad games, he... and now we. The the one thing, and we will try to cover that. Although there's just, I mean, at this point, uh, full speculation because if we were to go over the Bioware scale on this, I don't know where it would be at. It'd probably be around fifty percent or something, right? Yeah, I guess. So I it's it's on the borderline of stuff we'll talk about, but but it, it's this is the first time he's doing a game where he doesn't have someone really giving him oversight because mm -hmm. Sony <laughs> lets their creative people do whatever they want. So I'm thinking like Hideo Kojima without any limits on him, this will be the most batshit crazy thing ever put in in like it visual is. context. And we haven't even really seen anything of it yet. It's like oh Norman Reedus has a fetus in a jar. For yeah, it seems like a sci-fi baby clone weird thing delivery game. And Guillermo del Toro <laughs> is in it for reasons. Like, well, because okay. they there's actually interesting reasons for that. But we, if if we get information, we'll we'll go over that. Anyway, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 that'll be the main topic of our next game. Yes. And and we will actually talk about it because we wouldn't have recorded it four times before. <laughs> So that's good. And, uh, but don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't huh? do it, Tucker. Don't ruin us. No. Like, Tucker, seriously, if you don't want to play Cyberpunk, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I, I've, I'm just, from what well, I've hold, hold seen. On, hold on, don't, I, don't I, ruin next week's show. Please, let him dig his own no. grave. Come on. Tucker, no, tell him, don't ruin next week's show. Not play next, Cyberpunk? No, next week's show is going to be all about making fun of Tucker. If Just like is, every week's show. That is the literal basis. That is the foundation of our podcast, Minius. But l let's trust me. L let's save that so we can actually have something to talk about on next week's oh, show. Because okay, that'll be enough. a because we can go in depth. Fair enough. Uh, this episode is going to end up being a little bit shorter. But if you have an extra game, and right now I think we've talked about the games that are most on the Bioware meter that have been uh, that have been announced or we know are coming out. Uh, Dragon Age number one, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven number two. Mm. Just so people don't kill me, like the more I see of Death Stranding, if it looks interesting, if it looks like it's an actual, it, like it doesn't look like Kojima just spraying his creative juice all over the place and saying, "See my masterpiece," I, I will, I will certainly play it. I'm sure I will. I just can't guarantee I'll enjoy it. So please don't kill me for not liking the look of it so far. You, the, in all fairness, you have no idea what that game's about because no one does. No, Kojima doesn't even know. I'm sure. But like, uh, I, guar I guarantee he knows. I guarantee he knows exactly. Whether or not it works out is something different. Yeah. But I've, I've doubted him before when he came through, so. Oh, what did you doubt him on? I'm curious. I, I didn't think Metal Gear Solid V was going to work out. I, I, thought, I thought somehow, even though uh, Konami was all over him on that and it ended up basically kicking him out, 
uh, that game was really, really good. So. I just remember laughing my head off when he, yeah, was it E3 that he was like, oh yeah, there's totally um, a legit reason for why Quiet looks like that and you guys are going to feel so ashamed of yourself when she says she lo- you say she looks ridiculous. And it's like, oh yeah, great. <laughs> right, so uh, next week, 2077. Yeah. Do you know the original Cyberpunk tabletop game was Cyberpunk 2020? Yes. Do you know that's like in two years? Did it have really good vision? Uh, all right let's where's the mute button i don't know where it is uh so that's it for this week if you like this show tell your friends if not tell your enemies uh i think we'll be happy either way next week yes. cyberpunk 2077 if you want to email us check out or you can go to accidentally casual at gmail.com and we have extra content on our youtube channels probably bio essential by the time this gets out and mini sgc so, for Seeker Cat and the Tucker, I'm Minius reminding you to try to game happy. Game happy, guys. Because I have like five o'clock shadow, my face feels like a beanie baby.